everyone, welcome to the Oak Lords YouTube channel. In today's video, we are doing an unboxing. We are going to be unboxing one of the most popular beginner embroidery machines out there. Today we're unboxing the Brother PE800. Now, when a lot of people are first starting out in embroidery, it gets a little overwhelming. And I'm talking about machine embroidery, okay? Because machine embroidery machines, machine embroidery, Machine, embroidery machines can be very, very expensive, especially if you're looking at the big multi-needle ones, which are amazing. I, I sincerely love my multi-needle embroidery machine, but when you're first starting out, you don't know if you wanna make that kind of investment. So this machine, the Brother PE800, is one of the most popular ones. It's easily available, it's on Amazon, it's not, that expensive, it is still expensive, don't get me wrong, okay? It's But it's usually under $1,000. You can find it all the way to $500, up to $900. During the pandemic, it was even over $1,000, but at the time I purchased mine, it was $950. The next day, it was $700. So, keep that in mind. You might wanna set yourself a little like price alert on Camel 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 so that when the price goes down, you can snag it if you're interested in it. Now, before we open up the box, I just wanna make one quick note about embroidery machines. The biggest piece of advice I see given, and I agree with it 100%, is that when you're looking to buy your first embroidery machine, make sure you get a machine that offers a hoop size that's as big as you feel comfortable investing in. So, for example, you'll find a lot of single needle embroidery machines out there that are more affordable, but the biggest hoop size they can use, it doesn't matter what hoop you buy, the biggest it can possibly use is four inches by four inches. Let me get my little ruler out here. So that's, that's this right here. See that? This little spot right here. That's four inches by four inches. It's not big. It is very small. So if you're just looking to do like little things like baby bibs, there's like little designs here and there, it's gonna be fine. But if you wanna do a lot of the projects that we do like sanitizer holders, bookmarks, all that kind of fun stuff like in the hoop stuff, you're going to need a bigger hoop. A five by seven hoop is as big as the Brother PE800 gets. It's bigger. It's big enough for a lot of fun designs. Many of the designs we use too though, they go bigger. So this is why I think it's a good investment machine because it is inexpensive when compared to many other embroidery machines. It is a starter machine, but I do believe that if you use it and you decide, man, I love machine embroidery so much, and I want to invest in the multi-needle, I think you'll still use this one. I don't think that this will just be like, well, I wasted all that money for nothing because now it's just gonna sit in the closet. I do think you will still use this one, even if you have the multi-needle. So let's get the box out and unbox it. Also, if you're new to the Oak Lawyers YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them down in the comment section. If you want more information on this embroidery machine, I will have some channels that also discuss this embroidery machine and use it more. I will be using it today. We will unbox it and we will test it on one project, but I, I just got it, so I'm not an expert on it yet. All right, here we go. Here's the box. There we go, it's a big box. It's a big box. All right, let me see how we can angle this. I'm gonna raise the camera up a little bit. Let's see if we can open this box on the table. I might have to put it on the floor. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have to put this on the floor. Sorry guys, it'll be fine. Okay, so the first thing that's in there is the manual. Thank goodness for that. A lot of machines nowadays are not including any sort of a manual. It's just all online, which is convenient, but I don't know, I like, I like a book and it gives you multiple languages, so. English, that's the one I can do. Ooh, embroidery design guide, that's cute. So it looks like this comes with a ton of pre-set stitches in it, so that will be fun, that's great. Those machine set stitches are fantastic whenever you're just figuring it out. So you don't, don't overwhelm yourself right off the beginning. I know it's like, well I bought the embroidery machine because I have a design that I really wanna play with. But uh, you know, just, just try it out with what the machine has first and then move on. All right, and then you get a free embroidery design when you register your machine. That sounds fun. All right, there's that. Next up is, looks like a bag. Maybe it's a bag to protect it. Maybe like a dust cover. Yeah. Well, that's, 
Looks like a dust cover. Yep. This is a dust cover. Very handy. You do want to keep your embroidery machines, machines that you're not using very often, you do want to keep them covered up because fur, dust, things in the air, it gets into all the little tiny nooks and crannies and since these things are just computers, you gotta be careful with, with all that stuff getting in there. Next up is our hoop. This is five inches by seven inches. There's a lot of projects you can do with this. And then there's like a hoop guide. I've never once used these. I, I've never once used these, but you got it. And then it comes with a whole spool of embroidery bobbin thread. So that's great. This is brother brand. I actually like to use bottom line. I'll have a link for it down in the description of this video. Um, but that's nice that it comes with this because you might not have that. You know, when you just bought it, you might not have it. Power cord. Good. All right. Oh, look at this cute little tiny pouch. This is so sweet. And then in here, we have all the little things. So let's look at what is in the little things bag. We've, looks like we've got some needles. We have a little tiny screwdriver. No idea what this thing is, but it looks cool. Some bobbins for our bobbin. Oh, look at this, an adorable little pair of scissors. Those are so cute. I wonder if they're, let me see if they're angled or not. No, they're just, they're just regular little tiny scissors. Those are adorable. And then this is a thread, what is it? It's like a thread net. Um, don't throw this away. I use this a lot. If you ever have tension issues, this is going to help with that. A little brush for cleaning, another screwdriver, a seam ripper. Always love these little seam rippers. And these are caps to hold your spool in place. Another one too for a tiny spool. Oh, and then here are some instructions and the things you're gonna need for pre-wound bobbins, which are very, very popular. And pre-wound bobbins are what we use in our industrial embroidery machine. So the multi-needle embroidery machine actually can use those. The Bernina embroidery machine cannot. You have to have a bobbin that it uses. But pre-wound bobbins, you just buy them by the case. They have a little piece of cardboard inside. They have a magnet. You want magnetized ones. They have a magnet on the other side and it helps with tension. And then when it's out, you just toss it. It's great. I love pre-wound bobbins. So that's all the stuff in this little tiny pouch here. So make sure you keep it all together. You will be using most of these things. I know I do. So this is your little embroidery module, this little arm here, it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then it moves your hoop all around. The needle never moves. I think that that's a misconception a lot of people have. They seem to think that the needle on the machine boom, 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 moves all over the place. The needle doesn't move. The needle stays right where it is. It's got, it's got the bobbin hole it's got to go in, and it does not move. The actual material is what moves. So your fabric moves around with the help of this arm right here. This arm is gonna be able to move it around really quickly, but your needle stays in one place. Oh, and then finally, the beauty. Oh, look at her, isn't she pretty? You're pretty, I like you. She is a beaut, isn't she? So here's what she looks like. She's got her packaging inside. Let's take that out. Oh yeah, this looks so nice, nice and easy. We have a nice little digital screen here for all of our stitches. We have our needle, everything looks good. All right, so I'm gonna take off some of this packaging um, and then we're gonna get it loaded up and try it out. So I'm gonna use the instruction manual for this. <laughs> but since I have quite a bit of experience with embroidery machines now, I'm interested to see how this works. Cause I will tell you, whenever I first started working with my Bernina, I had so many tension and sticking issues that took me months to figure out. And I know now how to work with that machine so that everything turns out exactly the way I want. So I'm interested to see with this machine, can we just like right off the bat, just make it and not have issues. So let's try it. We'll try, we'll try making something that has vinyl on the top and also vinyl on the bottom of the hoop and we'll see how it goes. And if we have those looping and nesting issues, then we will use the same tricks and I'll show you all that. You know what's cute about this machine too is that my first sewing machine was a brother sewing machine. It was one of those project runway, you know, beginner sewing machines. A lot of us had that as our beginner one. Um, and it's like all the same. It's just like the same, like the same way to open up the bobbin. There's just so much about this. It's just, it reminds me so much of that machine. That's really sweet. It's very nostalgic. All right, we've got some lighting situations here. So 
my light comes from that window over there, but I need to also film this way. And then that looks dark. So let's try to add a light. Okay, so let's, let's read the instructions and see what it says to do first. Danger, electricity. All right, first thing, let's turn on this machine, huh? I got it plugged in, let's just turn it on now. Ooh, look at that screen, you see that? That's cool. It's like a little, like a little television. Select your language. Okay. Oh, hello. Nice, all right, so it's got some stitches already in there. Let's look at some of the stuff that comes in. Oh, look at that little bunny. That's adorable. All right, I don't know what that thing is telling me. It's telling me something. Okay, so there's buttons down here you can push to the next page. Look at how cute these are. Isn't there some cute stitches already in it? Oh, look at that. How do you do that? That seems like a lot of, a lot of thread. I'm gonna have to try some of these. These are adorable. Oh, you know what I want? I want that. I want that IRL. Well, that's fun. Oh, look at this little pumpkin. All right, so this already has a bunch of really cool stitches already loaded in it. That's fantastic. So now what I'm gonna do just to start off is I'm going to attach the embroidery module. There we go. Ooh, look, something happened to that. Ooh, malfunction occurred. Turn the machine off then on again. Yikes. Let's try it, see what we did. All right, so on this module here, when you're taking it off, there's a little, little handle back here. So you push that and then pull it out. It's actually very intuitive because I did not read directions. I just naturally did that to take it off. So it's very intuitive, but there was a malfunction. Maybe we're supposed to put this module on before we turn on the embroidery machine. Let's try it. See if that works any better. Raise the presser foot lever. Okay, the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. Keep your hands away from the carriage. Oh, look at it go. Nice. So that's fun. All right, so it looks like we're off to a good start. All right, so I wanna see, I think if we lift this thing up. Oh, look at this. There's like a whole world of things in here. Look at that. So that's where your thread goes. This is where we wind a bobbin. Oh, I like that. It's like a little secret, little secret garden for our embroidery machine. That's fun. All right, so I'm just going to just, just, so this is the camera that shows you the machine. There's no way to not have it in the shot right now. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to start by winding a bobbin. So let's, I'm going to use bottom line. I'm not going to use the thread that comes with it because I do, I do really like my bottom line. And if something goes wrong, I don't want to start thinking that maybe it's the thread. So I'm going to do bottom line. Okay. So here is, let me put this down. So this is bottom line. Now you can get it in a smaller spool as well, but this is the 3000 yard spools. I like them because you can get them in different colors. Um, most of the time you're not gonna see bottom thread, but in actually in our in the hoop projects like bookmarks, sanitizer holders, um, what we're making today are gonna be snap tabs. You do see those, you do see the bottom thread. So it's fun to have different colors. However, since it is so big, it doesn't usually fit on embroidery machines spool holders. So because of that, I have this here. This is just like a extended spool holder. This is also a tension saver for embroidery machines, specifically single needle embroidery machines. If you're really struggling with looping, nesting, problems like that, most likely it's a tension issue. And if you don't wanna mess with the tension on your machine, something like this helps a lot. So I'm going to just plop that on like that. And then we put the end through this little triangle at the top. Hello, pull it through. And now I will wrap it around wherever I need to wrap it around on the machine in order to make a bobbin. So my thread is supposed to go right here, but since I have this larger thread, it's not going to go there. So I'm just gonna actually just plop it right in front because I'm gonna move this out of the way anyways. So the first thing we're gonna do is plop our bobbin, empty bobbin right here on the little bobbin holder. Push it in like that. Okay, good to know. And then you're supposed to put your thread on here, but we're not doing that. 
We'll go over putting the thread on the actual thread spool in just a moment because that's when you're gonna wanna use your little net and a little cap as well, but we're not gonna do that for the bobbin. So we're skipping that for now. So it's gonna go over here and under. Okay, there's little, there's little numbers and arrows on here as well to kind of guide you. So it goes through that hoop and then it goes counterclockwise once around this little nub right here. And then you're gonna wrap it around your empty spool clockwise a few times. Oh my goodness, there's a lot to this, isn't there? Pass the end of the thread through the guide slit in the bobbin winder seat and then pull the thread to the right to cut it. Okay, so there's like a little notch in here. All right, and we cut it. So now it should be threaded correctly. But I don't know, we'll see. How do we start it? Oh, press the start, press the start stop button once to start bobbin winding. Where's the start stop button? Oh, I think it's this orange button right here. There we go. We're doing it. Okay, so it says when the bobbin winding becomes slow, stop it. So it doesn't automatically stop winding on its own. That is interesting. Because I was watching the bobbin and it was just like not moving anymore. So, okie dokie, artichokey. Now we're gonna take this off and then we can just use that same slit to cut it. And now we have a bobbin. Now I will say that's not much. That's not much bobbin, and uh, it, it, it did take quite a while to just fill up that little bit. I mean, not quite a while, but there are faster, there are faster winders out there. But, that's nice and easy. Again, I'm gonna link you guys to some pre-wound bobbins down in the description. You can only get them in white and black as far as I know, but they are magnetic pre-wound bobbins. Um, I am excited to give those a try. I'm not gonna do that today, but I will do that in a future video. We'll, we'll try those out. All right, so now let's pull out our bobbin thread. We're done with that. All right, so now we're going to put our bobbin into our machine. I already took the cover off. And then hold the bobbin with your right hand with the thread unwinding to the left. So the thread should be coming off the top to the left. And then we should just plop it right in there. There we go, plop it in there. Pull it so that it goes under this hook right here and then it's just gonna wrap around that little shark fin and then slice it. That's just like, that's so cute. It's just like my other brother machine, I love it. And then we're gonna put the cover back on. There we go, Whew, so far so good. So I think I am actually going to start out with a design that's already on the embroidery machine because I said that's what you should do when you first get it, so let's just do it. Let's actually take my own advice. Um, let's pick a design. So I want something kind of simple. These all seem to have a lot going on. Is there anything that doesn't have a lot of different colors on it? I mean, that heart doesn't. The heart looks like it could just be one color. So let's set the heart. That sounds good. Oh, and this is all in millimeters. Should we try to change that? All right, before we get too involved in the design, let's thread the top needle now. So the needle is already on the machine. I don't have to add a needle, so that's great. Let me get a thread. So there are actually a lot of different brands of thread I like to use. I like to use Isocord, I like to use Madeira, I really like to use Glide as well. I haven't had a problem using any of those on any of my machines. I know some people say their machines are very, very particular about the thread. Um, these have all been great. So today I'm using this matte hot pink thread, which I love, it's from Madeira. So first thing we're gonna do is remove this spool cap. And we're gonna take our thread and just put it on here. Sometimes you can get like a little cushion. Um, you can get these little cushions to put on here. Those, I don't know if they're necessary, but they seem nice. And then you can put your thread cap back on. You can use different sizes. So this is the size that's already on there. Let's see, I feel like this really small one is going to be too small. I feel like it could just go right. No, that's good. So you can put this really small one on there and just tuck it in and that is going to prevent this from wobbling around, which is fantastic. You know what, just for good measure, let's go ahead and put our little our little net on there. So I'm gonna take off the end. And what I do is you just put the thread on all the way and then take your net and put it on over your thread and then put your little cap on so that sucker doesn't move around on you. 
All right, let's try this out. There are numbers everywhere. So just like with the bobbin, we're gonna start at number one, go up, and then it looks like we go up here, number two, down this way, down to number three on the bottom. If you have a sewing machine, this should, shouldn't be that complicated for you. And then we're going to pass it through the top of the hook, back down to number five, down here to number six. Well, that's fantastic. That is probably one of the easiest threadings I've ever done. That's great. And then I think you can just close this. You just close that top. That's great. I love this. So I've never had much luck with needle threaders. Uh, I know a lot of people who use them love them. I just thread the needle while I can. I still have the finger ability and the eyesight ability to thread the needle by hand. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna thread the needle from front to back. All right, we did it. So machine's ready to go. Now we just gotta hoop something and get it started, right? All right, guys, I'm going rogue now. I'm gonna use my own personal experience to see if I can figure this out. So here's what I do most. I hoop, I embroider vinyl most. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna embroider on the vinyl. To test this out, we're gonna embroider on vinyl. So I wanna show you. If you go down here to your settings key and then go to the right once, here is your units. You can do millimeters or inches. All right, we want inches. Perfect, now I know three inches. This is about three inches by three inches. So that at least lets me know I need a piece of vinyl or scrap fabric that's three inches by three inches. I just keep moving this camera around everywhere. I cannot get the right angle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hoop a piece of cutaway. I'm gonna hoop a piece of cutaway, just one layer of cutaway, and then I'm going to float my vinyl on top of it. I could hoop my vinyl, um, but I don't think I have a big enough scrap of vinyl to hoop it, so I'm gonna hoop cutaway, float my vinyl on top, tape it down, stitch it out, see what happens. So I don't have my whole top down set up. So I just have to show you like this. When you're hooping, you have two pieces to your hoop. You have an outer piece and an inner piece, just like that. The inner piece snaps inside the outer piece. You're going to use a little screw up here to unscrew this so that you can easily get this inner piece in and out. Then you're going to cut your stabilizer so that it is bigger than your outer piece, okay? And what you do is you lay your outer piece down on the table, nice flat surface lay your interfacing over it, and then lay your inner hoop over that. Smoosh down your inner hoop, make sure it's nice and tight, and then screw it closed on the top. I will tell you there are little arrows here, so you gotta see the arrow on the bottom of your inner hoop, and it's going to match up with the arrow on the bottom of your outer hoop. Let me see if I can show you this. Can you see that? There are, there's an error on the bottom hoop, an error on the inner hoop. Those have to match up. So if you're confused, is this upside down? Is this the right side? Look for the arrows. All right, so once you have it hooped, it should sound like a drum. And now we're just going to slide this in. So I'm gonna slide it underneath my needle. And then, so it snugs in like over two screws. There's like two screws that sit out and there's little indentions and just snuggle it in over there. All right, all right, all right. Play, how do you make it go? Do something. There's a red button here, I feel like that's not good. Uh, let's push it. Lower the presser foot lever, you got it. Now what? Okay, so we did that, now. Finish editing the pattern before sewing the pattern. Well, what do you want me to do with it? Well, how do you want me to edit it? Okay, so I cut myself a little four inch by four inch piece of vinyl. Um, do I just click select? Edit end. Good. Embroidery. All right, oh, okay, now it changed to a green button. So I am going to lift up this presser foot and push this out. Is there any way to like stitch out exactly? Because I'm not quite sure this is gonna be big enough. You know what, we're just gonna, we're just gonna wing it. Just gonna wing it. This isn't a normal embroidery design for me. Normally on an embroidery design, it would stitch out the outline for me first so I know how big it is, whatever. We're just gonna do it. Let's just try it. Oh my gosh. Can I stop it? Okay, I can stop it. So I was holding the tail because that's just what I normally do on my other embroidery machine. Okay, so I cut the tail and we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. 
Should probably have taped this down, huh? Goes nice and fast, I like that. I do start and stop a lot when I'm embroidering because I remember things. So I'm actually gonna tape down the edges of this because I don't, since I'm not hooping my vinyl, I don't wanna worry about it floating around on me. Let's see, there's 4,588 stitches to this design. And so far we've done 114, it's pretty fast. Is there speed control on this thing? I don't even know, I don't think there is. It's just go, let's do it. done that did actually not take very long at all so let's pull this up now I don't believe this has a trimmer on it it doesn't look like well hold on hold on a second did it trim it it does have a trimmer on it well that makes sense I'm always surprised when a sewing machine has a trimmer on it but this has a trimmer on it as well so let's take the hoop out all right so I was able to get it out and here is the finished look. Isn't that cool? Hi there. That, it's stitched out really nice. So here it is on the front and you can see on the back we have that yellow bobbin thread. That is cool. So I am very impressed with the stitch out so far. No problems whatsoever with vinyl, no looping or anything on the back. All right, now let's try something that I would make normally in a machine like this. So. Right now I'm making a bunch of snap tabs for a wallet pattern. So just like I did previously, I am going to hoop one layer of cutaway and then I'll be floating different scraps of vinyl on top of it as well as fabric. Now, this does have a flash drive holder. I have my file on my cute little unicorn flash drive here and it needs to be in a PES format. So every embroidery machine has their own format file they need. This needs to be PES. When you buy an embroidery file, uh, most of the time they will have all the file formats available or you would just select the ones you wanted when you're purchasing it. So first thing I'm going to do is get this cutaway hooped and then we'll mess with the machine. Okay, so I have another piece of cutaway hooped. Now I'm just going to install my hoop and then we'll work on loading the file. So I'm just gonna take my little USB and over here on the right side where like the power button is and everything is a little slot for this. So yeah, I wanna cancel that. And then let's go to the little USB icon. Here we go, there's all my stuff. So let's go all the way over. This is the file I want. This file is from Creations by Connie. All right, so. Here we go, let's go to embroider. I wonder, okay, so it's gonna tell me each step, that's good, because there are multiple steps. So in the hoop projects are not really just like lay it out, embroider it, be done, like we just did with the heart. In the hoop projects are like, this step is a construction step, this step is a placement step. They all have steps, so it's pretty much like you're sewing something on a sewing machine, except you're just having the embroider machine do all the work for you, which is awesome, I love that. So this shows us all of the steps. All right, so we're gonna try it out. I, I also have the steps written out on my computer as well. It, it comes with instructions when you buy these files. This file is from Creations by Connie. Uh, she has a lot of really great options. These particular are snap tabs that you can use in bags and wallets. And I'm particularly using this on the Purse Pal from Lynn's Handmade. So I will, I will show you one of those in just a moment, but let's, let's stitch out the placement. So the first step is just stitching out placement for the snap tab. Um, and then we're gonna lay some vinyl over that. So let's just try it. So I gotta make sure I have my presser foot down. I'm actually gonna hold, you know what I'm not, I'm not gonna hold the thread. I always hold the thread. Let's just see what happens if I don't hold the thread. So let's do the first step. Didn't get all janky, that's good. So I 
have lots of these scraps of skinnier pieces of fabric. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot and I'm gonna see if I can get this to cover the whole stitch out. And I think I can. So that, that first stitch out is really great because it just shows you this is how much stuff you need. You need to have material that's this big. So that's fantastic. And then I'm going to lay this out over my stitch out just like that. And then I am going to grab some tape as well and tape it down just so I don't have to worry about it moving around on me. All right, the next step should stitch out the placement for my fabric applique. Again, I'm not going to hold the thread. Make sure you put your presser foot down. I like that, I like that the red, like the, the little button is red if it's like, you can't do anything yet, and then when it's green, it's like, all right, thumbs up, you're good to go. I am just shocked that it doesn't suck down the tail of that thread because that happens on every machine. That tail, when you first start, it gets sucked in the machine, it starts jamming up real bad, it birds nests on the bottom. Sometimes it causes thread breaks and stuff. I am just shocked that it doesn't do that. I, that's amazing, that's amazing. All right, so now I'm just gonna grab a piece of this fabric and I'm going to cut it out so that it is bigger than my little trace out right there. Okay, so I am going to take this fabric and I am going to gently hold it. You could also use tape to hold it in place. Um, as long as it's big enough, you could just very carefully hold it. So I'm just gonna push this down. And this next step is just going to stitch down this fabric. well so that I can now cut around it. All right, so now I'm gonna take it out and I have tutorials going over how to do stuff like this on my channel. We can definitely do a tutorial over just these snap tabs. If you guys would like, let me know down in the comments. Okay, you can see I cut down that fabric so that it's just right around the stitching. And I'm not changing my thread colors here. I am using the same thread color for all the steps, which is kind of how I like it when I'm using a single needle. If you find that you're doing a lot of embroidery designs where you're using a lot of different thread colors, that's when you want to start looking into a multi-needle machine because yes, it only stitches one needle at a time, but having to change out and re-thread and re-thread and re-thread so often becomes a very time consuming process. All right, so I believe this next step is going to do a little satin stitch around it. Let's just find out. Let's put it down and see what happens. Okay. So now we're doing a design. stop it real quick because there is a jump stitch here. I don't know if it was supposed to be cut, but I didn't want it there. And that's something to always remember with embroidery machines, stop it. If something's not, don't, don't go in there with your scissors when the needle is running. Don't, don't try to start trimming something, mom. Don't try to start trimming things when the needle is running. Stop the machine, trim it, go back. It's not gonna cause any problems. It is, it's no extra work. As you can see, I did not cut my fabric close enough to the stitches, so it's peeking through the edges, which is always frustrating. So I'm going to have to clean that up. All right, well, cleaning up around those edges will just be something I have to do later. Now, the part to really see what's going on with this. So first of all, I did notice it was kind of jumping a little bit. As it was stitching, it would have little moments where it's kind of like made a weird noise and it did a little jump. So I'm not sure about that. I'm also not sure about oiling. I didn't see any instructions on how to oil the machine and oil did not come with it. And I do believe it will require oil. We're gonna have to look into that. But now, 
we got to put the back piece on, which means we have another piece of vinyl we're going to put on the back of our design so that it's, you know, you can use both sides of it. The problem with this is, is that this vinyl likes to stick to the plastic bed of your machine. And when it does that, it creates looping and problems. So normally I cover my machine with wash away interfacing or wash away stabilizer and that prevents the sticking. But let's just see what happens. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm covering the stitch out of my back completely and then the vinyl will be right side facing out just like this. I'm gonna grab some tape. I'm just gonna tape it down. All right, so you can see I have the whole thing taped down. The problem you run into with this is that the vinyl starts to kind of roll up as well and the whole hoop gets shifted. It's a big mess. Tape can also be challenging because the edges of the tape, if they start sticking to the plastic, they'll roll up. It's a, it's, it's a whole thing. So let's, let's just see how it does. Like I said, I have a lot of tips and tricks that I use on my Bernina to prevent problems so that I know that this will turn out right. Uh, I'm not gonna use any of those. We're just gonna, just gonna see what it does on its own. moment of truth looks okay on the front but how does it look on the back oh that looks really good I don't see any looping or anything that is wild well that's fantastic all right so now I'm just gonna take this out um, if you know if you're using this is scotch tape masking tape if you're using masking tape it's totally fine if the machine stitches over it, it comes out of the thread very easily. Just make sure you take it out right away. Don't let it sit there for a couple days and get all sticky because then it won't come out. All right, so here is our finished stitch out, the first stitch out like in the hoop project. Here's the actual first thing we did. I am super, super impressed with this brother embroidery machine. I was fully expecting to see some sticking and some looping on the back of this. I do want to still figure out if it needs to be oiled. That makes me a little apprehensive if it doesn't require any oil, just because oiling our machines keeps them running longer. So if it doesn't require any oil, um, I'm not sure how long it's gonna last. But I know a lot of people have this machine. They've had it for a long time and they love it. I 100% think it's a great first embroidery machine, especially if you're trying to find something on a lower price scale, but also something that you can still use for all the fun projects you see us doing, especially on the channel. So I'm excited to play with this some more. I will have more tutorials on the channel using this embroidery machine because I know a lot of you are also starting out with these smaller single needle embroidery machines. If there's something in particular you wanna see, leave a comment down below and we'll do that. We have lots and lots of fun designers to work with over here. So we will make more projects. I'm thinking bookmarks for back to school, hand sanitizer holders, all that fun stuff. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.